everybody. It's Thursday, February 4th. Welcome back to the fourth ever episode of Angie Talk Sports presented by 732 Studios. Make sure you subscribe on your podcasting platform so you never miss an episode. And uh, here we are with another show covering everything that's anything in sports news with just enough for you to sound like you know what you're talking about. Disclaimer, some stats and facts may be fabricated and or skewed to fit my narrative. Deal with it. Do your own damn research. I'm your host, Kevin Angus Ryan, a.k.a. Sergeant Pepper, a.k.a. Angie Longballs. We have a huge show for you today. A lot is going down in the world of sports. Obviously, we're three days out from a Super Bowl, not just any old Super Bowl. We're going to take a deep dive into the COVID Bowl. It's going to take us most of the episode, and hopefully we got some time to talk about some other sports. I want to get into LeBron versus courtside Karen, a few other things around the NBA and the MLB. But it is Super Bowl time, the best weekend of the year. Should be a national holiday. I don't think that'll happen in Biden's America, but we'll move on. We're going to talk about uh, how the teams got here. Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, Baby Yoda, Old Yoda. Who's going to dominate? Who has the force with them? How did we get here? We're going to look at the Buccaneers. Last few games, their playoff games, their playoff run, and a little bit about their seasons. We're going to get into each and every individual player who's going to make an impact in this game, mostly on the offensive side of the ball. we got a few defenders for you, too, to talk about. And obviously, we're going to do uh, Bruce Arians versus Andy Reid. Two big fellas going at it. The player to start with, the king of the NFL for the last, I don't know, 20 to 30 years. The man who makes everyone around him better. The man who can't stop winning Super Bowls. A man who at the age of 43 was able to throw for 4,633 yards and 40 touchdowns. His name is Tom Brady. Tom Brady is the Patriot way, according to Danny Amendola. And he's taken a Tampa Bay franchise from not even making the playoffs since 2003. Their big run with John Gruden and transformed them into what might be a mini dynasty. If He's able to rattle off a few more before he hangs up the cleats. LeBron James is quoted saying, at our age, we can still dominate our sport. We have one common goal, and that's to win at the highest level when asked about Tom Brady. And that's what Tom Brady's done all season. We're going to get into the last few playoff games, the playoff run that they had, slaying the MVP of the season, Aaron Rodgers, taking him down at his home field, Lambeau, the frozen tundra. And that's just what Tom Brady's done all season. He's taken this group, this Buccaneers team, and he has made them into a championship team. The Tampa Bay locker room has had nothing but good words to say about Tom Brady this whole time. The, uh, the knowledge and experience that he brings them, all of the wise words he has to tell, it seems like he coaches even defenders. Um, pre and post snap, he lets them know what they're doing, what they can do better, what the quarterback's looking for, and he's just a football guru. He knows everything about the sport, where everyone should be, what everyone should be doing. And they all look to him like the, uh, like the player coach, owner player coach. He should get a piece of that franchise like Jackie Moon. But we can't talk about the king of the NFL, the king of Tampa Bay, Tom Brady, without talking about his weapons. And it has been a huge part of his success, the ability to throw it all over the field. He's got Mike Evans, who he connected with 70 times throughout the season for 1,006 yards. And 13 touchdowns. And Mike Evans is just a receiver that's always going to make the play for you. Uh, The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have him coming back next year to run it back with Tom Brady and the boys. Uh, He's not the deep option, but he is the guy who's going to make most of your plays. He's always open. He's always, if you hit him in the hands, it won't be dropped. But Chris Godwin was hit uh, 65 times for 840 yards. And if it was just those two, that would be enough. It's one of the best combos, receiver combos in the league. But then you add in the addition of Rob Gronkowski and Antonio Brown, which Gronk also found the end zone seven times, averaged 13.8 yards per catch for 623 yards. As much as you want to say Gronk slowed down a step, yeah, he did, but he's still making the plays. He's still finding the end zone. And every time Tom Brady needs a late game completion, he's looking for his boy, Rob Gronkowski. They just got the connection. Rob might not be able to do all the things he used to do. It is a young man's game, but Rob knows the game. He knows where to be, and he knows how to play in big game situations. And I'm looking for Rob Gronkowski to definitely produce in this Super Bowl. That's really the only reason they brought him in. They brought him in to catch the ball, score, go up and make the play when there's not a lot of time left. 
when everybody's freaking out, when they're close to the end zone and they just need a big fella to go up and make the play, and I expect them to do that this weekend. If that wasn't enough, they also added Antonio Brown, who has been one of the league's best receivers in past years. Not as productive as he would uh, expect, but with those three other options for Tom Brady to be throwing to, obviously he's going to be getting less touches on the ball. It's kind of like what's happening with KD Kyrie and James Harden over there in Brooklyn, but Tom Brady was still able to find him 45 times or 483 yards and four touchdowns. He is contributing, and he is someone that the Chiefs defense definitely need to be aware of. Not that they don't need to be aware of all of Tom's options. They're all unbelievable. There's really not enough people to cover all those guys. Somebody's always going to be open when you have a group of receivers and a tight end like that. But Antonio Brown is definitely a weapon for Tom Brady. There was some questions about whether or not he would play. There was a few injury concerns, but uh, all reports look like Tom, uh, Antonio Brown is full of go for the COVID Super Bowl 55. So I, I'm excited to see all of those guys out on the field working with Tom Brady. Out of the backfield this season, Tom Brady had his leading rusher, Ronald Jones, who on 192 attempts had 978 yards for seven touchdowns. Another ad was uh, Leonard Fournette with six touchdowns, 97 attempts, 367 yards. And they're just moving the ball. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers might need to upgrade the running back going into the next season if they want to try and run it back and even get to this point again. But they're solid backs. They're uh, Obviously, the Tampa Bay offense is predicated on the long ball, the deep, not the deep throw, but the throwing game in general. And all they need, all the production they need out of those two backs is just get us the yards when we need them. They're not looking like uh, at the running backs like the Titans look at Derrick Henry to basically drive the entire team down the field on his back. They're just looking for spot plays, and for those two guys to move the chains whenever they can, get the ball moving forward, set Tom Brady up in a good spot, be a running threat so the defense always needs to worry about the run, worry about the the ball coming out of the backfield. They just can't let the defense get comfortable that Tom Brady's passing the whole time. They're expecting the same thing over and over again. Obviously, they're going to be able to shut it down. Not that the Chiefs' defense is seriously scary in any way they're a definitely solid defense they were able to get the Chiefs to this point but obviously that was on the back of Patty Mahomes who carried that team and all of his weapons obviously we'll get into that the last guy we got to get into one of Tom Brady's newfound weapons towards the end of the season has started heating up in the playoffs he's been a x-factor Scotty Miller white chocolate he is a beast all around he's like a baby Edelman and Tom Brady just seems to love throwing him the ball. He's quick. He gets open. He gets in those tight spaces where not a lot of receivers could go. He's not an elite receiver, but he's definitely a great option to pull off when uh, the defense is focused on Mike Evans, Gronk, and Antonio Brown. When they're focused on shutting them down, Scotty Miller could get loose and make a big play out of nothing. So definitely keep an eye on him to make his mark on the COVID Super Bowl. A lot of this game is going to come down to coaching. Both sides have unbelievable talent, unbelievable ability to move the ball down the field. With Bruce Arians, the head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he seems to be very excited, going to get the guys going, get them ready, one of those famous Bruce Arians pregame speeches. And Byron Leftwich, the offensive coordinator, he's got to get his boys going. Like they always do, he's had a lot of success this season. But the, as some are calling the X factor, the guy who needs to be on his game, the guy who needs to draw up some plays to slow down Patty Mahomes and that high-powered offense, Todd Bowles, the defensive coordinator, has had a lot of success this season. Obviously, they're in the Super Bowl, but their uh, defense hasn't been able to slow down many teams. They've been letting a lot of points get scored on them. And if there's anybody to go into a shootout with Patrick Mahomes, it should be Tom Brady, and he probably is able to keep up with him in the scoring department. But Todd Bowles definitely needs to get his boys to make a few stops, shut that down. And uh, the more turnovers they create, the more times they stop the offense and the more times they put the ball back in their guy, Tom Brady's hands. And Todd Bowles is definitely going to have to draw up a game plan 
to slow down Patrick Mahomes, which is the hardest job in football today. There's really no slowing that man down. And we're going to get in to Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs offense. They were able to score 57 touchdowns. 40 of those were through the air with 6,653 of total offensive yards this year, averaging 6.3 a play. And although a barber or a haircutter, as Adam Schefter would call it, tried to take down the Chiefs just a day ago, they will be out there on the field taking it to the Buccaneers. Led by their captain, the Chief Chief himself, Patrick Mahomes, this season he threw for 38 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, 4,740 yards on 8.1 yards per attempt. And this weekend he's definitely looking to help out his brother's TikTok game by winning a Super Bowl, allowing Jackson Mahomes to have some sick celebration dances in Tampa in the hot weather. The Chiefs are going down there. Playing the Buccaneers at home for the first time in Super Bowl history. There's a home team playing. And Patty Mahomes is the reason that the Chiefs are back here. Obviously, he's got all the weapons you need. He's got a head coach in Andy Reid, who is an absolute beast. I think he's the greatest coach of all time. And that is a direct shot at Bill Belichick. But let's look at his weapons. Tyreek Hill. Had 1,276 yards this season and 15 touchdowns on 87 receptions with a huge 14.7 yards per catch and uh, contributed behind the line of scrimmage with some rushing. Had 123 yards this season and two touchdowns, so he's getting the ball in the end zone. That's 17 total touchdowns for Tyreek Hill. The Cheetah, also known as the fastest man in football. And... He just makes plays that make you that blow your mind. Every time you see the cheater running around the field, he's making people miss. He's running from sideline to sideline, and there's no one who can keep up to him. It's tough to even hit him. And we're going to the exact opposite of Tyreek Hill, small and quick, to Travis Kelsey, the big fella. He was their leading yards receiver with 1,416 and 11 touchdowns. On 105 receptions, he had uh, 13.5 yards per catch, so both of them are definitely basically averaging a first down every time they touch the ball. And his other two weapons, McCole Hardman and Demarcus Robinson, combined this season for an extra 1,026 yards. So those two weapons, Patrick Mahomes is definitely looking to use, spread the field out, take the pressure of the Tampa Bay defense off Tyreek and Travis Kelsey. and. Those two combined for 1,026 yards, seven touchdowns on 86 combined receptions. So he's definitely looking for those guys. And then a few other additions, a few other options he has in the air. A few guys who scored touchdowns for the Chiefs this season include Sammy Watkins, Byron Pringle, Darwin Thomas, Anthony Sherman, and Eric Fisher. But the beast coming out of the backfield, and I'm not talking about Le'Veon Bell, CEH, Clyde Edwards Hilaire had a 803 yards and four touchdowns this season, and he's an absolute unit. He moved the ball down the field by himself, giving Patrick Mahomes that protection, that cover, just so there's a threat coming out of the backfield. He had 803 yards and four touchdowns, 181 attempts. Le'Veon Bell, their other running back, their second leading rusher, had 328 yards this season, and added two touchdowns onto the total on 82 attempts. Look for both of them to be moving the ball. They're going to use them in tandem, put them together, put CEH out there, put Le'Veon Bell out there, and just try and confuse the Tampa Bay defense. Todd Bowles definitely has a lot on his plate and a huge job ahead of him. And then their third leading rusher, the beast, the baby goat, baby Yoda, Patrick Mahomes. He's their third leading, leading rusher with 308 yards and also two rushing touchdowns this season on 62 attempts. And if old Patty gets a little too greedy, starts running around the field and it winds up getting hurt, they do have an absolute unit. The guy who saved the game a few weeks ago, the guy that Andy Reid trusted to throw the ball on fourth and one, and he got the job done. Henny thinks possible. Chad Henny, absolute beast. Their defense led off by Tyron Matthew. He's all over the field. He's making plays. 
their defensive line with Chris Jones. He's had seven and a half sacks this season. He's going to be trying to get through that uh, Buccaneers offensive line. We'll see if he could do it, see if how many times Tom Brady goes down in the backfield. And that is a huge key for the Chiefs defense in winning this game is getting pressure on Tom Brady, making him move out of the pocket. He definitely is able to extend plays, but he's an old fella, and uh, his knees are getting a little weaker. His steps, just a step slower. And if the Chiefs want to give their team the best chance to win this Super Bowl, the Rona Bowl, they're going to need to get pressure on Tom Brady, make him move around, get through that Tampa Bay offensive line. And Chris Jones has done that seven and a half times this season. So we'll see. It's going to be a battle. You got Tom Brady. You got Patrick Mahomes. Old goat, baby goat. You couldn't really want anything more out of a Super Bowl. If Tom Brady's able to win his seventh out of 11 trips, only losses coming to an absolute unit in Eli Manning. My goat, the king, brought two home for old New York City, and taken down once by Nick Foles. But if he's able to, in his old age, at 43 years old, to take down the NFL's golden boy, Patrick Mahomes, and the threat that is the Kansas City Chiefs team, he is the undisputed greatest of all time. Not that a majority of people don't feel that way already. I still say both Mannings are my goats, Peyton and Eli. but. If he's able to do it for a seventh time, I don't think we'll ever see anything like this again in sports. Unless, I guess, Patty Mahomes wins this one and rattles off another few, but even that train will come to an end eventually. To get to seven is just such an accomplishment, and that is a huge reason why Sergeant Pepper's official pick for the Rona Bowl is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, simply because I want them to win obviously old Tampa but just to see Tom Brady win it for a seventh time something that no one in NFL history has even come close to Terry Bradshaw has rattled off four Joe Montana four it would just be unbelievable to see and if Patrick Mahomes win his wins his second Super Bowl in two years second Super Bowl of his first three years of starting I mean, that's a that's the best start to a career in NFL history. So either way this game goes, I'm going to be happy. I'm very excited for these two teams to battle, to go to war this weekend. And I'm expecting, I have the highest expectations for a Super Bowl that I can remember going in. These two teams are perfectly built. They both have unbelievable weapons for their elite quarterbacks to throw to. They both have at least somewhat of a rough run game. The Chiefs obviously have a better one. And they both have coaches that are experienced and veterans and know what they're doing. And they're both built in a way that's going to provide for a high-scoring, intense football game. I mean, obviously, as long as they're both able to get it going, which I assume they will be. They've done it all season. There's no reason to think otherwise. And this game should literally just be a shootout between the greatest to ever do it and potentially the future greatest to ever do it. It could be a passing of the torch down from Tom Brady to Patrick Mahomes if the Chiefs do take this one and if they're able to continue this unbelievable run they're on. I know they might run into a few salary issues they say in the NFL if you win you get paid and for teams for dynasties that's something you really got to manage everybody's going to be expecting their money everybody's going to be overvaluing their importance to the team but if they're able to figure that out this could be a team that we're seeing in Super Bowls for I don't know the next three five ten years and I mean they do have Patrick Mahomes locked down for that long It's not out of the question, but they definitely need to keep everyone together, keep the core group of guys. You can't be bringing in outsiders, ruining the chemistry of the locker room. But this is about this weekend. This is about this Sunday. What's going down? Chiefs, Buccaneers, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, Bruce Arians. The list goes on. 
Sergeant Pepper picks the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to take this one home. And we'll see you Sunday. I'll be tweeting about it. Follow 732 Studios on Twitter. Live tweeting. Keeping everybody updated on the game. Not that everybody's not watching, but we'll be there.